Hey everyone, my name is Derek Schaefer. Science Stuff and Things is the YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm here today in my lab. I'm going to do a furnace tutorial uh, for some of our tube furnaces as far as how to run the controllers. I'm making this video primarily for our group, but I thought I'd share it to the YouTube channel in case somebody else out there needs to run the same controller and needs a little uh, tutorial video. So uh, if you're looking for more lab tutorial videos, subscribe to the page. If uh, you're just here for this, leave a like if you like it. Um, any, anything helps. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump over to the furnace controller and I'll show you how to run this thing. All right, everybody. Uh, here's our box for our furnace controller. This is the one for the vertical tube furnace, but they're all generally the same idea. We use Eurotherm 3504 controller panels. Um, I think they're a little outdated at this point, but uh, they still work great. Um, the SCR and the over temp gauge on the other furnaces are a little bit different, and even the output amps meter down here is sometimes a little bit different, but they all do basically the same thing. Um, so I'm just going to give you the rundown on here, and if you need details on the different SCRs or over temps or out, out uh, amps meters, uh, you can do a little bit of reading of that on your own or uh, even shoot me a message in the comments or in an email uh, if you uh, you know have any questions on that. Um, so just to give you a basic rundown of what's going on here, um, we have our master control and our uh, circuit breaker switch. We also have our over temp reset button, our output amps, which is just uh, the you can see the output amps on the SCR and on the uh, output amps meter, so they're kind of a little redundant, but not all the SCR SCRs have that uh, gauge in there, so we have a second gauge. Um, and then the over temp reader, some of our other ones have a digital reader, this one's analog. Um, so basically what these do is the, the controller does what you think it does. It controls the temperature of the furnace with respect to time. Um, the SCR is uh, like a relay, um, so it controls how much power is going to it, and that's why it has the amp meter also on it here. Uh, the over temp is essentially like a safety. If it gets above a certain temperature, it will automatically go into reset mode and turn turn off. Um, and when you turn the furnace on each time, it's automatically in reset mode, so you have to hit the over temp reset button to start it, um, which we'll get into here real quick. Uh, so all you're going to do to start this thing up is you're going to turn both these switches on. I don't think it matters which order you do the switches in uh, to turn it on, but they both have to be on. Um, like I said, this one does the power. I'm pretty sure this one just does the circuit breaker. Um, so if you have one on, I think if you have the master, uh, yeah, I think you have to have them both on for everything to turn on. Um, so. We'll wait for it to turn on here. It just tells you it's programmer version 3.v3.30. Um, so you can see um, that we're hooked up to the thermocouple because it's reading about the right temperature. Um, and we open up to this screen with WSP and the power out. Um, obviously the power out should be zero when it's not powering anything. Um, so that's okay there in the output and everything. The next thing you're going to do is hit the over temp switch and you hear the loud uh, manual switch flip over, uh, which is your manual reset uh, or like analog reset, I guess I mean. And the light turned on up here indicating that the over temp is ac active. So, and you also heard the fan kick on on the furnace. So now you know that there's power going to the furnace. Uh, everything should be ready to go. So now what we want to do is we want to focus in more on the actual controller and setting up uh, the program that you're going to run in order to, uh, you know, actually operate the furnace. So we're just going to scoot you guys closer here. Sorry about all the movement there. Um, and there's a little bit of glare, so I apologize for that in advance also. But we can see here we have our, our temperature reading. We also have our power output down here when we're in WSP. If you were to hit this button, this uh, uh, it looks like pages on the button. It's this far left one. It scrolls through the different menus. Uh, so the biggest ones are program status and program edit. 
as well as the WSP. So we already kind of went over what WSP is. That's just gonna be your output. Uh, if we go over to program status, that's the status of the program that's running. Right now, it doesn't really mean anything. The status is reset because nothing is running. Um, so when the program ends, it automatically goes into reset mode. Um, or when you end a program, it goes into reset mode. So that's why it says the status is in reset. And you can scroll through your different programs here, but it doesn't really do anything because nothing's running. Um, but if we go over to program edit, this is where we can start to build our program. Um, so, you know, you pick which program number you want it to be. Um, some of these are already written, so you can kind of just edit them. So I'm just gonna like make program one our example here, but you, I, I don't know how many it goes up to exactly, but uh, I don't know, let's scroll through. 25, so there's 25 separate programs you can write. Um, so if you're afraid of overwriting somebody's important programs, make sure you check first. But uh, in general, they're pretty easy to write in here unless you have a really long one. So um, for today, I'm just gonna go over how to write in these programs and run them. Um, if you need more details about the other settings like the alarm settings and stuff, I suggest reading the manual. Um, the other important thing here is what type of heat treatment you're gonna run. I have two suggestions. If you're running a program heat treatment uh, our furnace in particular, the tube furnace that we have, doesn't have any forced air cooling or anything. So you're not gonna be able to hit particular cooling rates. Um, the, the best you're gonna get is furnace cooling or air cooling. Um, so if you're trying to hit particular cooling rates, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you're trying to hit multi-level heating curves or a certain heating rate, we can achieve that up to about 15 degrees Celsius per minute. I think that's about the max for uh, these two furnaces. Um, so you can see here, if you don't do anything, it times out and goes back to WSP. But um, so you can program these, but in general, I would use them for isothermal heat treatments. Um, and uh, today that's kind of what I'm gonna go over. Obviously you can add more segments to these and like keep adding temperatures and ramp rates and things. But in general, um, you're gonna use this as an isothermal heat treatment, you're gonna set the furnace to a temperature, it's gonna reset temperature, you're gonna put your sample in, you're gonna let it sit there for a given amount of time, you're gonna take the sample out and let it air cool, or you're gonna turn the furnace off and let it uh, furnace cool. Um, so let's just jump right in here. So we go over to program edit again. This little curly Q arrow is how you scroll through the menu once you're here. Um, so if we go ahead and we uh, start back at the top here. Oops, sorry. If you hit the page button, it just takes you back to the top. Um, so once you're at the, uh, at the interface, you set your program, you set how many segments you're going to use. In general, you use three, you use a heating rate, you use uh, the hold temperature. Uh, so this, the first segment is the heating rate. The second segment is the dwell, which is the hold temperature and the hold time. And then the third segment is the reset segment. So for ice thermal heat treatments, you're mostly looking for three. You can leave the holdback value at zero. Ramp units are typically in minutes. Um, cycles, just one. Uh, oh. So if we go to segment one, if you just keep scrolling through, it goes to the different segments. So you start at segment one, the segment type is rate. The target set point, which is what SP stands for, is 1100 degrees Celsius. So it's going to heat up to 1100 degrees Celsius at 15 degrees C per minute. Uh, that's why we set the, the minute. Uh, you can leave your hole back off. Uh, and now we're on to segment two. So that was, that was all of our heating. Now we're on to our dwell. So the segment type is time. And that's just, you're just gonna set a target set point, which is 1100 degrees here. Um, and you're gonna set the duration, which I said is 30 minutes here. I was performing a uh, burn off for uh, a newly replaced tube on here. Um, so I just held it at 1100 degrees C for 30 minutes and then it automatically will turn off. But what I tend to do is, so say I wanna do a aging heat treatment at 1100 degrees Celsius or an austenitizing uh, or homogenizing or something. Uh, I would say, you know, if I want to do 30 minutes, 
I just set this for like two hours and then I do the timing on my own because uh, what happens is if you, if you wait to put your sample in until the furnace is at temperature and you don't put it in right away, what will happen is the, um, essentially the timer will start as soon as it reached, reaches temperature. So if you don't put it in right away, the furnace will start to cool down before the 30 minutes is up. So if you're performing an isothermal heat treatment, my suggestion is to set the temperature, whatever temperature you want, but don't worry about the time. Just make sure that you have lots of extra time. And then you just control the time by when you put the sample in and when you take the sample out. Um, for the tube furnaces in general, uh, I think that's the best way to do it is you're going to be putting them in, letting them heat up as fast as they can, and then you're going to be letting them air cool. If you need a furnace cool, you can also just come up and turn the furnace off and let it furnace cool naturally without taking the sample out but the same thing still applies in that you're not relying on the uh the program time for that you're going to just turn the furnace off um so again we have ramp rate we have our hold uh so if i'm doing a 30 minute uh, say I'm doing an hour long heat treatment. I set it for two hours just so I have buffer time. Um, when I do like four hour heat treatments, I'll set it for like six hours just so that way I have plenty of buffer time. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then segment three is just an end type segment and it resets. So what that means is that after four hours or whatever, um, whatever you set the dwell time to be at the end of that, it's just going to turn off. So, um, the program acts almost like a safety. You'll see, I'll also do our box furnace controller, which is different. Um, and when you have that in local mode to do isothermal heat treatments, it doesn't automatically turn off after a certain amount of time. So if you forget to turn it off, it will just continue to run. Even if you take your sample out, it'll just continue to run, uh, you know, indefinitely until somebody turns it off, uh, which isn't great for power consumption and, and the longevity of the furnaces. But here you kind of have a built-in safety mechanism in that it automatically resets after that given time. So even if you forget to turn the furnace off or you forget about your sample or something, it will turn off. Um, like I said, I give myself a buffer time so your sample is not going to necessarily be uh, dead on. If you want to, you can manipulate the, the time in so that way you can put it in at a given, like say you want a 30 minute heat treatment and you set it for 35 minutes. You can make and you want a furnace cool you can make it so you come down here and you look at the clock and you put it in as soon as it says 30 and then and then the furnace will do the rest of the work but i think it's simpler just to keep track of the time on your own and let the furnace just be a heat source um anyhow so say our program one is ready to run um we went through we did all that stuff right now it's set to heat up at a rate of 15 degrees c per minute to 1100 degrees celsius it will then hold 1100 degrees celsius for i think it was an hour and 56 minutes and then at the end of an hour 56 minutes it will turn off um, the box won't turn off the controller will just turn off the heating elements so the fan will still run and the box will still be powered up but there won't be any power going to the actual heating elements of the furnace anymore um, so what we're going to do to run that is we're going to go back to our program edit we're gonna make sure we're on the program we want to run and we're just gonna click the button, this little dot below run hold. You don't have to hold it, you just have to click it. And then it asks you what program you want to run. Um, so we wanted to run program one. You set it to run program one and then it says right below it, run hold to start. So all you're gonna do is click run hold again and then it'll automatically take you to program status where you can see how much time is left for the segment and what segment you're on and what program you're on. So you can see that we're on program one, which is right. That's what we wanted. You can see that we're running segment one, which is the first segment, and that's a rate, and that it's gonna take about an hour and 10 minutes to reach temperature. Um, and then if you, uh, if you want to sit here and watch it, you know, you can sit here and watch the thermocouple and make sure that it's uh, heating up as you go. Most, uh, most of the time you can also run separately a thermocouple into the furnace and um you know record temperature as it goes on your own computer um, which is what i recommend uh secondarily what you can do 
is you can go to WSP again, and you can see that our output power is at 8.5 out of 100, which isn't much, but it's just starting to heat up. Um, and this is just how, like a percentage of how much power is being output to heat up the furnace. Um, so that's another good way to show that it actually is working correctly. Um, it's not jumping all around. It's gradually increasing the output power to gradually heat up the furnace. Furthermore, if we were to back up here again, we can see that the uh, power out on the SCR is starting to go up and the output amps on the amp needle is starting to go up as well. Um, these are all good indicators. If they're jumping around, it's usually indicative that there's a thermocouple issue. If they're not doing anything, it's indicative that there's a power issue. Um, if you see that the output power is at like 100 on the controller, but none of these other things are doing anything, um, that usually means that there's some miscommunication or some misconnection. Um, and you're going to have to to work on rewiring the stuff in the actual box, um, not just some thermocouples. The last thing I'll show you here is like I was saying, when we're running these isothermal heat treatments, what I normally do is I just automatically, or I just manually turn it off. Um, so all you're gonna do to stop the program, is you're just gonna hold the run hold button. And then you can see it uh, automatically turns itself back off. Um, so now if we go to program status, you can see that it's in reset mode again. Uh, so that's in general how you're going to run it. Um, the other thing to consider is once you turn off the program, the furnace is still hot. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll leave the controller or I'll leave like the box on because then the fan cooling the outside of the furnace, like the outside of the heating elements still runs. And that way um, you're, you're kind of protecting the equipment that way. You're allowing it to cool a little bit more efficiently. Um, so, um, if you're still going to be in the lab, but your heat treatment is done, I would recommend leaving the box on and letting the fan run to allow it to cool while it continues to uh, finish its cooling, uh, cooling time. But once you're all done with the furnace, um, once you're done for the day and you're heading home, you're going to just turn both of these switches to off and everything will turn off. The fan will stop running, the furnace elements will not be on anymore. and uh, that's about all there is to that. Um, like I said, there's other stuff you can change. You can change alarm settings and whatnot, but uh, as far as the basics go and running the furnace, that's all we're going to go over. If you need more details, I recommend checking out the manual or going to the Eartherm. Here we have a CM furnace so or the CM uh, website as well to get manuals or to uh, call into their office for some help. Hey guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Uh, thanks again for checking out the video and for checking out the page. Leave a like if you found the video helpful. Subscribe if you wanna see more tutorial videos on lab equipment as well as some lectures uh, and general science things that I tend to post just for fun. Um, thanks for joining me. I hope it was helpful for you guys. Um, have a great day.